today. So I was really upset about that because when I come here, I always listen, expect to hear Gene talk about TI, TI calculators, and so. So, so we thought we'd, we'd give you some a, a preview of my the fact that even though I'm a very huge HP fan, I do own one TI calculator. The rate, the way I got the TI calculator is someone I bought a HP calculator off eBay and. The guy felt so bad he threw in a TI calculator. I guess he didn't, he didn't want it. He wanted to get rid of it or something. So, so this is this is the MBA. This is kind of their financial calculator. So when I got it, it's typical. That was Gene. You bought the stuff from? No, no, no. The MBA. It wasn't, it wasn't Gene. So typical, the battery packs just go on these, right? They're rechargeable battery packs, and they're no good. So I decided, okay, well I got to reopen, open it up, rebuild it, see what I can do on. So it's got an interesting battery pack on it. It's sort of sitting over here and I'm doing some measurements on it. It's got a boost regulator that boosts up to from three volts to nine volts and uh, it, it runs the runs the calculator. But I noticed something odd about it when I was testing it. So I looked more into it and you know I looked at the leads on it. And if you look I've got there's a red lead and there's a black lead, and I've got my meter set up to measure this, right? But then if you look even closer, you see there's a black lead, but it's actually connected to TI's red lead. <coughs> this is a interesting thing is, TI, obviously, if you're an electrical engineer, you know anything about electronics, red usually means positive. Well, in the TI world, that's negative. <laughs> so if you're messing around with the battery packs, you got to remember that in the TI world, that's the, that's the negative lead and the black lead is the positive lead. If you get it reversed, you will not have a good event with your battery pack. So it just goes to prove that TI engineers don't know what they're doing. They really should go to HP. Well, that's why they went with algebraic, right? <laughs> yeah, that is exactly true. How many machines did it take to find that out? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure a, a few battery packs got uh, destroyed, right? <laughs> so, today, today we're going to talk about Panamatic's new HP 25 low power. So, Bernard has produced a, uh, a chip, an IC that goes into uh, several calculators, uh, the, the Woodstock variety. And allow you to produce, uh, you know, a device that has extremely low power, and it has a uh, expanded capabilities, has a beeper, has an alarm, has a real-time clock, date, date calendar in it, and so really, really nice, really nice. So I'll uh, pass this around in just a minute. So it's always on, never goes off. Um, it runs at such low power, it's rechargeable. Um, gets actually rid of the uh, the um, power supply in it completely, so you're not worried about having to, you know, uh, damage your damage your axe chip, you know, because actually he's replacing that. Does it give it more program memory? It does. Yes. Yes. The, the simple answer is yes. So we'll get we'll go over that. So, so there are many many Woodstock calculators that have been damaged due to electrical overstress. You know, someone's tried to charge it, and, and it made you know. You know, if the battery's not there, in, uh, or if the terminals are corroded, um, you know, HC made a very poor charging scheme. And what will happen is the AC adapter will go in and it'll electrically overstress the uh, micro or the act chips inside. And typically it'll damage it, it could damage the ROM and the RAM. Uh, so there's a lot of HP um, Woodstocks that are sitting around there with, that just won't function at all, right? So. What's the answer? Well, Panamatic uh, or Bernard came up with an ACT repair. And so the ACT, and you, if you were here last year or two, you heard uh, Jeff talk about ACT. And the ACT chip basically replaced, uh, it was another replacement that uh, Bernard made to take out the existing ACT and replace that with a, uh, with a, a different processor that emulated everything, so on the processor. And uh, so this year, he's got a new low power ACT. So let's talk about it a little bit. What does that mean? Oh, by the way, this is kind of tradition for me. If you've seen any of my presentations, I do this caution thing. But uh, Bernard says, hey, if you're doing this, you know, it's, it's your responsibility to, to, you know, if you buy the ACT kit from him, 
you know, it's your responsibility to, you know, get it working and function. He's not responsible for any damage. I put this all in there because he had it on his uh, website and on his document. He said, I'm going to soften that a little bit. He said, that, he said he's done over 100 of these and he's yet to have a problem with it. So, um, so what is this? The Woodstock low power circuit's a replacement for electronics uh, hmm. for a calculator like the 21 or the 25. Hmm. It takes over all the functions and adds new ones. It's like it's ACT circuit, like, like the other one. It's a different processor, but similar. So you can repair your processor if it's been damaged. And then the key are low current consumption. It preserves your registers. There's really no off switch. You can use the on-off switch, but it doesn't do anything. It really, it's, it's there for uh, esoterics. And then uh, preserves your calculation state. So you don't ever have to switch off your LED calculator. What a great deal, and it can run 250 hours before it needs a recharge, so basically 10 days. Yeah. Uh, converting your HP calculator, just remove the two display driver chips, um, so that you do have to remove the top display driver chips, the uh, cathode driver and the anode driver, because why, why, is, why is he doing that? The reason is because he's come up with a whole alphanumeric. So with the seven segment displays, he's actually replacing the driver chips, would not allow you to get to all the alphanumerics. and. Uh, so he's come up with a whole alphanumeric set that basically uses the seven segments. Uh, so the nice thing is you, to programming steps, you can actually type mnemonics in instead of having the row columns if you've done anything with HP Woodstocks before. So this is basically shows the board if you're actually going to do the change yourself versus uh, Panamatic doing it. So here are your anode and cathode drivers at the top of the board and there's your act chip and nine times out of ten that's blown up if you've had a bad battery in it. So so what happens is you basically take out the act check, you take out the display drivers, and then uh, what you do is you put in uh, Bernhardt's uh, new, new device on top of that. And then there's some uh, couple of traces that need to be cut to make sure you're not power powering it from, uh, from the existing power supply because that's not even used anymore. So, the Woodstock, it's a result of an idea to repair those calculators that have been damaged, not only just the ACT chip, but any, possibly other chips inside. Um, it overcomes the alphanumeric limits of the old HP calculators. And then it adds flash memory. So, 512K byte flash chip, there is the processor, and there is actually a real time clock calendar chip that's on there. And there's a, on the back side, there's a PZ electric device that's driving. So you've got sound, and you know if you can, you run up to 250 hours on 2,500 milliamp type of batteries. So what's new? So you can do a ticker text. You can have 80 line character uh, of some message that you want to have scroll across. You know during a, a startup or during some time in a display, during a program, you can show mnemonics instead of the cryptic huh. <coughs> One, four, seven, four, huh, what is that? Oh yeah, that's the pause. Oh, you can actually type pause. And it actually says that. And when you print out a program on a 82240, it actually will be printed out as pause on your printer. Yes? How do you connect your printer to that? Ah, IR. There's an IR connection. So, we're getting there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but good question. It has a real-time clock. It's a very accurate real-time clock calendar. It doesn't need to be calibrated. It's got a crystal, a stabilized crystal inside of it. So uh, no calibration. So it'll lose roughly plus minus three seconds or so over a period of a month or a couple months. Um, shows the battery voltage. What's the battery voltage? Oh, there's a key combination that shows battery voltage. Shows the temperature. Um, wow. My God. I did the temperature on this one, and it was like 143 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm thinking there's, there's maybe a calibration. I spoke with Bernard, and at home it showed 58 Celsius. So, ah, no, so, okay. uh, <laughs> so it's a it's a rough approximation, but that's a little too much. <laughs> They're not sitting in a volcano somewhere, right? Uh, so, so by the way, this is a prototype. So he's he's still working on this. So, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and start this around. Uh, one thing to note. Um, so this is very early prototyping. Um, if you press the end key, sometimes it's a little flaky, so I don't know if there's a keyboard issue on this, but uh, 
If it looks like it's asleep, just press the device key. It wakes it up. So uh, I'll just go ahead and pass that around. Well, in the middle. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. Um, sleep mode, whatever the calculation is made, calculator can enter sleep mode. And it doesn't need to consume battery power until you wake up. And you can press the device key to wake it up. It'll, after a minute, you can set it to after a minute, it'll turn off the LED display. Or after 10 minutes, it'll turn off the LED display. Or never. Or you can just say, I want to display all the time. So there are settings in there to change that. And then it's got a beeper. Wow, what a neat idea. You know, a calculator with a alarm that can actually wake you up in the morning. It can, it can signal I'm done with a particular calculation. Or, Mm -hmm. so, so some neat, neat things. So full speed all the time. Uh, braided pause will be one second, so it's accommodated that. Um, so there's no original slow mode. So if any of you have used the X chip, there was a slow mode or original mode. There's, there's nothing to this. So it's just full, full on. Uh, continuous memory. So your register is a memory preserved. Programs are stored in the flash memory. And they'll stay preserved with no battery installed. There's a flicker su suppression. So if you remember sometimes when the calculator would run in flicker, and that's that's suppressed. That was actually a feature. Yeah, we like that. You did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> there, there, there will be a little pro progression of, of display. So, um, so it emulates many woodstocks, not just with the original act, but it'll emulate the 25, the 29, the 34, and the 67. Mm. And there are vinyl overlays for those. So you get, uh, you know, the set, uh, 49 steps, uh, program steps, 98. 98. 98. I've forgotten this one, and I think 225. 224. 224, thank you. I think 34C. 210. 210. Show ROM code and show ROM check is no longer part of this firmware because they're not using the, not using the ROMs on board. There is a stopwatch. So you can start a stopwatch, and you do lap times with it as well. Hey, Jim? Yes? The overlay is also very useful, right, if you're donating a non-HP25 to become one of these guys. Correct. Yeah. 521, cheap, right? 21 should be a few dollars, right, on eBay. But you can make a vinyl overlay. In fact, the one that's going around has a vinyl overlay on it. It's actually very, very, very good. Yeah, where are you? Um, on the X chip, the one that he breathes, he had a chest clock, uh, is not in this firmware because of the way that he reconfigured the uh, real-time clock to be one of the timers. Uh, there's only one timer to be used. Yep. Yes. Can you go back to the previous slide? Sure. Uh, point 10, the multitasking. Yes. Can you mention that? I can, but I haven't looked into it. So, you, oh. you know, <laughs> I I discovered it. Uh, it was basically a accident at yes. the beginning uh, because I could run the pro uh, a program, and uh, in, when there was a pause instruction, I could uh, jump into the running uh, stopwatch. Ah, okay. And it went back and forth. So, okay. uh, and now he really, uh, yeah, he, he, ch he checked this, and it's really he can do these things. Uh, all the time. Right. You don't have to wait for a pause. Right. right. Un unintended multitask. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Happy yeah. accident. Yeah. Uh, you said full speed. Uh, ah, yeah. How much faster is that than the normal? It executes, I think, I think it's, it's 50,000 instructions per second. I think I have to go back and check that. Oh, so. the original. Yeah. A lot. Like 3,000 like 3, instructions per second. You know. Oh, really? Yeah. It's quite a bit faster. Um, so stopwatch can be run with the calculator in the off mode. So basically, that's what, what the horse was saying. You know, uh, can count up, can count down, can count down and sound the piezo. Uh, so you can set it for a certain time. To have it count down. Uh, wake up. As I said, you just press the divide key, or you can wake it up by any key. You wanted to say, hey, I want to specify some other key, or I want to just hit any key on the keyboard and wake it up. So you, these are flags you can set. Um, so there's a, so when you, also on the program switch, the program switch is not a program switch anymore. It's just every time you switch it from one direction to the other, it writes to the flash memory. So things are really stored in RAM while you're writing a program. Once you want to dedicate that to the flash memory, you just flip it from whatever side the program 
run switch is. It's not a program one run switch anymore. So, um, so there's an alarm. Actually, the mnemonic alarm appears in the display when the alarm goes off. And then uh, there are many ex other existing ACT functions that were in the previous ACT chip. So there's an LED test, lights up everything, all the digits and all the uh, decimal points so you can check your display. Um, counts uh, the number of flash write cycles. So this is a uh, 512K byte flash memory chip and uh, there is limited amounts of writes. So it's like 100,000 writes. So you're gonna, you're gonna do a lot of writing before you exceed the capacity. And that's, and that's over the full operating temperature range of that chip, which is minus 40 to plus 85. So if you're using an ambient temperature range, that's, temp that's a temperature dependent uh, type of write. Uh, characteristics. So you're going to get well over 100,000 writes. And no, but didn't you say the temperature was 130 something? <laughs> you know, on this, in that particular calculator, it is. Um, so there's improved show available memory registers. There are 20 flags available. There's a show program checksum, so you can see the checksum of the program. So you, you want to make sure that program is the same on this. Uh, and and he's still working on this upload download data. Gee, what a nice feature, right? Yeah. Um, so a low power circuit can be connected to a PC via USB TTL serial converter, the same converter that used to transfer from the ACT chip. Now that one of the issues is that he hasn't got an FTDI USB serial chip inside of that. So it really requires at this time to open up the calculator to do that. So it's not a convenient thing, but you could do it. And there is a there is a converter chip that he ships with the kit uh, that allow you to do that and allows you to reprogram or reflash the the uh, IC the, the ACT chip. So um, so there's some so it's still in development and there's still some features on this that are in development. So if you run into something while it's passing around, you may see something that may not quite work. Um, so. Uh, well, before I do summary and conclusions, uh, there is a uh, GPS option similar to the ACT chip. So there's a GPS that could be placed inside this and you can dynamically get position uh, and time data and, and accurately act, you know, use that inside a program. So it will be an IR LED for printing. So it will be able to print to an IR capable printer. And um, so those are two other options. And uh, I think he listed the kit price with the IR diode as $149, and uh, I don't think the uh, then the GPS option is separate. And then there's a option if you want him to do all the modifications, he'll do the charge for that. So, oh, okay. so just a summary. So the HP25 gives new life to the Woodstock LED series of calculators. Low power, always on. You have fast ex execution speed, real-time clock, calendars, alarm, and stopwatch, program step mnemonics with a full character set, uh, continuous memory, uh, a larger memory, much larger, with 512 gb byte flash, um, the state of battery, uh, also battery voltage, and temperature. Uh, you can switch between calculators, but obviously your vinyl overlays will have to change too. So you have a different calculator, and that's all. That's all held inside the uh, uh, memory chip. So those are all inside. He's still manipulating a little bit to make sure you can get all the functionality inside of that uh, the 512K. So that those calculators are already in there, and that's what the way it comes shipped. Um, Fixes the previous dead calculator, so if you've got a dead calculator, or you buy one on HP 21 off the eBay, you can, you can use that. And then optional IR printing and GPS modules are available. And it makes the sound, it beeps. So I think that's pretty cool. <coughs> um, just acknowledgments and credits. Of course, Bernard, is, this is his development and his, uh, uh, you know, his creation. Uh, Eric Smith, obviously we wouldn't be talking about this without all Eric's pioneering work. So Eric is obviously one of the key people in this involvement. You know, uh, Information that, that I've come by with Tony Duell, uh, Jacques Laporte uh, and his website You know, for uh, Woodstock calculators. Um, obviously we get a lot of information off the Museum of uh, HP calculators. We've always dialogued with Jeff and we see all of Jeff's contributions he's given and then of course Richard and all of the great things that he's contributed and helped us with on this. 
Um, there's some things in this, uh, there's some act revisions and you can see these are the manuals and actually the, uh, the low power manual is on your flash drive, so the, the new flash drive, so you've got that and you can look at it. And this is kind of shows some of the uh, different revisions that uh, Bernard has done through on his uh, deck. And then there's just some uh, cards that come with this and, and it's not only the HP 25 and I've got a laminated card that's going around with it. Uh, it shows all the different commands that you can use. So, you know, things like their combination G plus, you know, some to show the sound the beep, you know, and then there's how you get to all of these different functions inside of the calculator that weren't available before. Um, you know, there are print commands and there are GPS commands and they're available on these cards as well. So that's included in your presentation. So that's it. Jim. Quick Any question. Yeah. The, with the new power system, can you still use the old charger and NICADs in the machine? The, the, intent, the intent is yes, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll see when they finally get that. Yeah, 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 you can't use those those original NICADs. They've gone bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Use <laughs> <laughs> uh, some nickel, nickel metal. Guys, right, right. Well, uh, you may have mentioned this when I was out. My apologies. But the ability to have those 100 flash programs yes. to call is incredible because there's a wonderful uh, set of programs for the 25 that were developed a long time ago, all of which fit into those 49 steps. In the PPC journal, there were the HC25 library. I think there's a PDF of all of them that I pulled together out of Jake's scans of the PPC journal. And it's been posted to the forum. That may, I mean, that's what I intend to do when I finally get mine, which hopefully will be in a month or two, is to load all the different ones you might want. You never have to turn, worry about turning the thing off. Yep. Right. Yep. Oh, by the way, you can chain programs, too. Mm -hmm. So you got one program in there, 49 steps. It can chain to another one, another one. You can chain all 110, you know, you know one massive mm -hmm. program. Cool. So, so it's not just limited to 49 steps. Yes. So then, the LP is not available. Not yet. Okay. No, he's still finishing the development. Correct. So this will be the equivalent of the, uh, the HP 25 ERR? Yeah, in addition to it. Yes. Yes. <coughs> yeah. 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 It's in addition to it. So. Okay. Yes, Richard. Uh, what was the total uh, program steps? Yeah. Well, there's 40 not for the 49, mm -hmm. I mean for the 29, it'd be, it'd be 49 steps, the original one. But it's 110 programs. 110. In the in, and and the, the 25 was the same. Yes. Yeah. Well, you couldn't get 110 programs. You could only get 49 steps. But you can store 110 programs of 49 steps. Oh. Right, so what I'm saying is that um, the, 20, the 25 library, which was done by what's the James guy? Davidson. Jim Davidson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I visited him. Uh, it's very unfortunate his death, but. Uh, um, you know, you work endless hours to get to save one little step, but you could put two of them in there, right? So, yeah. yeah. So that's very effective. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Anything else? Oh, thank you. Thank you.